Today's challenge will be similar to the previous bridge challenge we did, which was an introductory activity. And in that one, we created a river, and then the challenge was to build a bridge over the river. We allowed the, uh, the use of supports in the middle of the river, like a pier. And by doing that, that makes it quite easy for virtually anyone to, to create a bridge. It may be very simple. They can put different designs into it, but, uh, but they're, they're going to succeed easily making that kind of bridge. And there was some control as far as how wide that river might be. In this uh, challenge, with one simple twist, it really completely makes it an entirely different experience. This one is really going to concentrate on the engineering structurally how do we create this span? To start out, it'll be the same prompt as before where they'll need to make parallel lines with the planks and then the space between the planks, <clears throat> we just imagine that's the river. The river should be maybe about eight to 16 inches wide. They can change the, that, uh, the width of the river in the midst of the uh, challenge as well if they're uh, feeling, uh, feeling good and want to make a really wide bridge and then find out this is going to be really hard. I think I need to shrink my river a little bit. They can make those adjustments on their own. The challenge in this one will be to create a bridge over that river. Uh, the bridge cannot touch the, the banks of the river that you just created with Kiva Planks. And in this case, it can't have any supports or piers in the middle of the river. One of the nice things about this activity I like is that uh, it's a series of lots of little failures, little, I like to call them setbacks. As someone is trying to create maybe a bridge like this, as soon as they get to maybe this point here, you can see a failure right here. And so they quickly figure out whether this is a four-year-old or a high school student that I need more weight over here before I can go further this direction. And so that's the core of this challenge is trying to deal with that. And as they're doing this, they're going to be working with balance, with counterbalance, cantilevers, fulcrum points, leverage. We may not be talking at all about the, the physics, the proper names for these things, or you may not be describing fulcrum points at all, but, but they'll be dealing with these things and starting to, to understand those. The first attempt is very, it may not look very much at all like a bridge. It starts to get very, uh, very sloppy and ugly as people are pack stacking weights to try to figure out how to make this happen. And that's, that's all wonderful. And that's what we want to happen as we're, uh, as you're designing your first bridges, you have to work out the structural design. What does it take to make it structurally work before you can start worrying about the, the, the beauty or the look of the bridge? So I often use as a word of encouragement when a structure collapses before they expect it or before they wanted it to collapse is that that, that shows that they're really pushing the limits of, of what can be done. And, and if it's very easy to do something like this and there's no risk with that, but as soon as you start to push the limits, that's when you're more likely to have failures. So we're, we expect to have failures if you're pushing the limits of, of what gravity is going to hold up. After they've, uh, they've built this, as always with virtually any of the activities that I suggest, uh, include time for them to walk around and view other people's works. Uh, you can also invite them to uh, uh, to talk about their design, what they tried, maybe something that didn't work, but then they did this and it did start to work. And so they get to verbally describe their thought process and, and their experience and get used to talking to a group as well and sharing their ideas. In the future, uh, once they start to learn some of these basics of how to build a bridge and more efficient ways to create that overhang, which they'll, they'll come up with, uh, eventually they'll be building wider and bigger, taller bridges, bridges from one ta table to another and that sort of Thing. But this is really the, the, the core starting point of, of building bridges. If you have the opportunity to do this activity without them seeing other ways to build bridges, that is my favorite way to start so that they really have to struggle with the physics of making it happen. And, uh, and eventually they'll start to figure those things out and maybe you can introduce some of the pictures and diagrams and we have tutorials that show how to build bridges. It's most impactful for them if they kind of struggle through that. If they've already seen it, that's great. They'll just be advancing uh, quicker into making more advanced bridges and, 
And the nice thing is once they have the bridge building skills, their imagination can really take over as far as how they might build a bridge going all the way across the room or from one table to another that is a different height or a bridge that has a little bit of a slope and then maybe you can have a, a ping pong ball run down the bridge and different things like that. Those are all things that they'll be moving, moving towards in the future. But, uh, but for right now, simple little ugly bridges to start with is, is a really nice place to start. One of the advantages of building bridges with loose parts, with simple blocks that don't have connectors like Kiva planks, uh, as opposed to uh, oftentimes the traditional bridge challenge has been glued, uh, gluing toothpicks together. And typically people invest a lot of time building an intricate bridge with lots of toothpicks, maybe over weeks, days or weeks, and then they finally have their bridge made and then there's some sort of challenge with weight to see how much weight it'll hold. That's definitely a very fun activity and, and people love doing that. The, the drawback to that though is that the, um, there's a lot of time invested into the building of it and uh, and they really only get one chance to fail. They build whatever that is and put the weights on it and very rarely does anyone ever go back. Either the teacher suggests you go back or the students even have the, the will to want to rebuild a bridge and see if they can do it better. So uh, the opportunity to learn from what you made and and improve usually isn't there because it just takes so much time to, to build. When you're doing it with loose parts, the process is so much quicker. Uh, this can be a 10 or 15 minute activity if you want it to be. We want them to be getting used to having setbacks and that this is just routine. It's no big deal that something just fell. I'm just gonna uh, clear it up and start building again. This is more important than the engineering. Only a handful of your students are gonna become engineers and, and you know what minuscule amount is actually gonna ever build a bridge. But the idea of of thinking of a design, building it, and then when it doesn't go quite the way that you think it's going to go, that you don't get upset, you don't get bothered, you don't, don't get discouraged, you just keep going on. With this, we have we start to build the concept of continual improvement from multiple iterations or, or multiple tries. It's all part of the growth mindset that you just because you may not be a good bridge builder today, you're not very skilled at it. You maybe have never done it before, so I wouldn't expect you to be a very skilled bridge builder. But if you start and you start building bridges and you learn new ideas, either by things you experiment or things you see other people building, uh, you'll quickly find that you're becoming a, quite a skilled bridge builder. And so that concept that you can go from, I don't know how to build a bridge to now I do, building that into, into life uh, it carries over into much more than just building building these simple little bridges. When they go to write a paper and someone asks them, do a rough draft, refine that, refine it again. All of those things that start to polish that up from your, your the rough ideas of what you might want to write about to what is actually really readable and, and doesn't have errors in it. Performances, whether it's a musical instrument or singing or, or acting or sports, all of these things multiple iterations of practicing doing it more times you generally tend to get better and better we're designing bridges but the other things that are going on may be much more important than the bridges thanks for building with me today and i will see you next time and until then let's build a mind